The number one culprit is actually dairy. And it doesn't matter if it's A1 or A2 dairy. We know that dairy consumption for genetically susceptible individuals will exacerbate autoimmune disease. And autoimmune disease, we're talking about the immune system actually attacking your own body. Your immune system is just meant to protect you from foreign pathogens. So if you have a little virus that enters your bloodstream, your immune system is meant to look at that and say, hey, you're not from these parts. I'm going to deal with you. Now, the problem is if your immune system looks at a cell of your own body, and mistakes the identifying barcode on that cell. Every cell in our body has a, a different barcode. It's what we call a glycoprotein for a particular molecular sequence. And if it mistakes the glycoproteins or the identifying molecules on your cells for a foreign cell, what we call molecular mimicry, it will attack that by mistake. And dairy is one of the foods, one of the food groups that most strongly triggers autoimmune disease. And I think the best example, the most interesting example I have, funnily enough, uh, this is totally coincidental. I just happen to have this uh, sitting on my desk right here. And this is a little study. This was published on the 9th of March in 1931. It's uh, the studies on nutrition mm -hmm. uh, and it compares two African tribes, what they refer to that as the Akakuyu and the Maasai. And these two tribes... Uh, were very interesting. But basically, the English went along, they colonised, they wanted to boost economic productivity, and they said, we can we can make these tribes more productive if they're healthier. Maybe nutrition has something to do with it. So, and they had this beautiful ecological study just waiting to be done. They had the Maasai warriors, the warrior-aged males of, who would consume meat and dairy only, compared to the Akakuyu, who were largely a vegetarian tribe. And they were genetically similar because they were intermixing via marriage. So beautiful study. And what they found, no surprise. So if I go to, I think it's page nine. So the survey of the two tribes showed that the diet of the Maasai consisted to a large extent of milk, meat, and raw blood, and the Akakuyu mainly of cereals, roots, and fruits, the outstanding points of difference, blah, 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 blah. And then physical measurements show that the full-grown Maasai male is five inches taller, 23 pounds heavier, and his muscular strength as determined by the dynamometer is 50% greater. Marked differences were found in the incidence of disease in the two tribes, bony deformities, dental caries, anemia, pulmonary conditions, and tropical ulcer being much more prevalent amongst the Akakuyu. But here's the kicker. On the other hand, intestinal stasis and rheumatoid arthritis were more common amongst the Maasai. And if we actually went and had a look at the data, they actually measured something called the rheumatoid factor, which is one of these proteins produced by your body when it's trying to attack itself. And I believe the factor that defines that, so we know the fact that they're on a low-carb, high-protein diet, that led to them having being tall and strong and metabolically healthy, but they had these autoimmune issues triggered by the dairy. Now, first of all, let's talk about briefly about the intestinal stasis, constipation. So people may not know this, but morphine is very constipating. So opiates, these drugs we derive from poppies. In medical school, we were taught the hand that writes the script for the opiate writes the script for the laxative. We know that these opiates are incredibly constipating. What most people probably don't realise is that dairy contains morphine. There's something called casomorphine. It's natural, and that's why dairy is so delicious to the point of addiction for a lot of people. So when people go on these ketogenic and carnivore diets, they're often consuming loads and loads of dairy. It, dairy becomes the replacement for sugar. So that warm hunk we get when we eat sugar, that releases dopamine into the mesolimbic pathway of our brain. We take sugar away. We need to get that from somewhere else. Where do we get it? We often turn to dairy. So people often go into these diets consuming copious amounts of dairy. And believe it or not, that is one of the most significant triggers for autoimmune disease.